Okay, so you guys may have seen the video that I did where I built this 800 watt solar array, and this has come in very handy. I've used this for a variety of things. I continue to use this, but there are times when I need more solar input than I can get, obviously, out of an 800 watt array. So I've decided to take it up a notch, and let's go check and see what this weekend's project is going to be all about. All right, so this is what I'm doing this weekend. I've got this new uh, bright mount aluminum solar ground array rack from EG4. I bought it from Signature Solar in Texas. Uh, they did not give this to me. I paid for this with my own money. So we're going to find out how this uh, rack performs. This hopefully will be a little bit easier of a project than the one that I did where I built it all myself out of a design that I had to come up with on my own. And this will allow me to hold larger uh, panels, those guys right there. Now this is only going to allow me to hold four of these panels. I actually have a pallet of 10. These are Hyundai I want to say they're 395 watt bifacial panels. We'll take a look at that probably in a separate video in terms of getting into those particular panels and testing those. This is going to be concentrated on building this rack. I've got a couple of uh, eight foot ground copper ground rods over here. So I will be driving those in the ground. Uh, and I've got a bag of, uh, you know, bare copper grounding wire as well that we're going to connect all this to. Now this thing should come with the grounding lugs for the panels, I think I've got uh, hopefully some uh, clips that I have purchased for wire maintenance and uh, all that kind of stuff. I haven't gotten into the boxes yet, but we're going to see if I've got everything that I ordered first and we're going to start putting it together. So uh, first thing to do is probably go ahead and build these little wooden bases, um, get those ready so that when I get this assembled, I can attach them to the wooden bases and then I'll be off to the races. I just made a rhyme. Not on purpose. These are my four bases. Now, the, uh, these are actually originally designed to be uh, attached to concrete footers. And they have these uh, concrete, smooth. They have these concrete expansion um, anchors here that you can drill down in. And that's what you would normally attach these aluminum foot brackets to. Now, since I kind of need the ability to move my solar panel around from time to time, not that often, but it's definitely not going to be a permanent installation. I didn't want to use concrete footers because that would just be a waste of money and time and effort. So I bought three four by six um, beams here and I cut two of them in half to make four 48 inch lengths, one for each foot. And to get it a little further up off the ground, I took the third one and just chopped it into, uh, into four uh, two foot sections. And that gets it a little further off the ground. Just gives me a little bit more mass to tie into with these uh, monster lag screws here. So this is not going anywhere. Uh, and once I get this fully assembled with the rack, it's going to be probably a little over 200 pounds when I include the weight of this wood and the aluminum hardware. And then when you put four of these solar panels on there, those are about 50 pounds each. So there's another 200 pounds. This thing's going to be about 400 pounds. It's not going to be moved much. I feel like this was a good sort of uh, compromise uh, mounting system for what I'm going to be doing. So I guess let's jump to the next step, get all the hardware out of this shipping box and find out uh, what it takes to put the rest of it together. All right, I went ahead and kind of laid out the pieces just so I can see what I'm dealing with. And the, uh, the actual rails are still here in the box. Uh, I got a couple of extension pieces in there that will allow you to extend those rails out. So it's two rails and they come in four pieces. And then the rest of this stuff is basically the leg base assembly. And I'm gonna start putting those together and attaching them to my little four by six uh, bases that I've created there. And then once I get all that done, I will be relocating that outside where I would attach the rails then and do all the proper spacing and everything outside, kind of in place roughly where the solar panels are gonna end up. Cause I don't wanna have to move it other than maybe just a little bit once I kind of got the rack assemble. Uh, and I will point out, it does, uh, in the box, it comes with a packing list, which is nice to be able to kind of double check and make sure you got everything, but it does not come with a, an instruction or assembly instructions. Uh, those actually uh, have to be downloaded online. So you go to signaturesolar.com, you go back to the uh, product link where you bought it, and inside there, there's a link to download the assembly manual. And so I just downloaded it as PDF printed it off. So it looks like a pretty straightforward process. It's eight pages 
And so I'm just going to jump right in and kind of do a time lapse and just start building the, the leg assemblies. And then once we get that done, I'll have to wait another day because it's dark out right now and we'll move it outside when we have decent weather and finish the assembly at that point. All right, so let's get started. <laughs> Right. I have basically got all four of the leg assemblies done. I just have to attach the little rail feet that will go on the bottom and then attach to the actual rails. All right, something interesting here. When you are connecting the two rails together to form one long rail, you use this sort of rail splice <laughs> uh, assembly they have here. And inside there, if you can make that out, there are these little round discs. These are grounding shims and they have little barbs on them and they need to be able to to scratch through that anodized coating so that you get grounding across the rail. And so it's real important if you look at the instructions on here it tells you that the disc needs to sit on the outside of the rail. So you want to make sure you got them in the right orientation. So I'm going to put it on kind of upside down. I have to flip the uh, the rail channel upside down so that the so gravity will kind of hold these little uh, grounding plates or grounding shims in place as I do it. So just take care to that extra little detail there because it's important for grounding purposes to make sure you're grounding across both rails. All right, if we get in here real close, you can see that I have the, uh, find my finger, I have the little uh, grounding shims on the outside of the rail between the, uh, you know, the, the wide plate in the rail itself, so those are in the right position. I've got those finger tightened, so now I can go back down and uh, tighten those down properly. All right, one other thing I want to point out is that when you're putting these uh, these brackets in, if I can show you on the side there, there's, there's little lips on the underside of that beveled piece that need to be positioned properly uh, under, the, under the rail. So that's, this is what it looks like when you have it correct. If you don't do it correct, well, I'm gonna to have to redo this other one. You can see this one is not correct. So you do have to be very careful that you get those in the right position. So take care to make sure that that's lined up. All right, I've got the leg assemblies done. I've got the rails assembled and uh, it's time to move this stuff outside. Now, taking a quick look at the uh, installation diagram here, Looks like these uh, these feet need to be spaced 51.2 inches apart. So I'm going to go need to space those out outside in roughly the spot where I'm going to put them and see if I have to deal with any leveling. That's going to be the next thing I need to figure out as I uh, try to move this out and get it all fully assembled. All right, so I got them sort of test fitted in place. And as I suspected, uh, I don't have complete level. Uh, it tends to drop just about a quarter inch uh, from each footer to the next footer. So I'm going to need to get some uh, sand and bring that over here and I'm going to take these rails back off and reposition. And the other thing I'm going to do is once I level these out, I also want to make sure that they are the same distance from the barn structure just to make sure I have the same alignment as the barn because the barn is actually perfectly aligned to uh, do south uh, for good, good catching the solar rays. So yeah, I'm going to do that and then make sure that I've got these leveled front to back and then level with each one of these footers. And then once I've got that, I will reassemble the rail. That's gonna take a little bit more work. I might have to wait till the weekend to get to that, but we'll see how the weather holds. Uh, and then I'll reassemble it on the leveled off uh, bases and we should be in pretty good shape to fit the rails back on. Relatively straightforward after that. All right, I would not say that was easy, but it was maybe easier than that 800 watt 
DIY array that I did. Certainly it's more robust and will last significantly longer being an aluminum frame. It is much more heavy duty. But let's talk about uh, some of the things I learned in the process. Okay, first of all, I am not using those, as you know, those concrete piers that the plans recommend or assume. I'm, off, I'm using these little concrete block footers. Um, and the hard part, really, of this whole thing, <laughs> the hardest part, was getting these uh, leveled out. I think the other thing maybe that I would say I would highly recommend is having an extra pair of hands. Uh, I, I was able to do a little creative engineering here with these leftover sandbags to lift the panels up to where I wanted them. Since I did only have one pair of hands, I used one of these little in clamps here uh, when I set this panel first because I kind of wanted to make sure they straddled the center. So I made sure it was secure with an in clamp temporarily just to kind of hold it until I could get uh, the second panel in. And then once I did that and got these secured, um, then it was pretty pretty straightforward. It was just really a, a wrestling match, not a uh, not a logistics match. <laughs> if you get my drift. Yeah, so pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with this and I think I pointed out this earlier. We'll take another look here in the sun. Is you can see there are gradations. I've got these set at 35 degrees and this one says 40. And I think I'm gonna leave them here for now. I think this is a pretty good general angle for me, but these are adjustable with these little set screws here. And it does seem pretty secure. I, I mean, I think maybe it, uh, you know, if you were really intent on double securing it, you could pull one of these little set screws out and uh, drill and put a replacement bolt in there that just kind of kept it from moving ever. Um, I might want to adjust these. I might play around with that a little bit. And I may have mentioned it before, but these are bifacial panels. And so you do want to get them up off the ground as much as possible, uh, because the closer they are to the ground, the more shade, uh, the less ambient light they will get near the bottom, which will affect the uh, benefit that you might, you might be able to get out of the backside contribution here for power production. All right, I think that's about all I'm gonna do for today. Weather permitting, I'll be back tomorrow and do the grounding conductors, grounding clamps. And we'll try to get some of that, uh, some video of that so you can see what that looks like. But it is important to ground these to an earth ground uh, just so they dissipate static and, uh, and lightning strikes that might be nearby that might hit the ground. So things like that. All right, so see you in a bit. All right, I've got grounding rod number one in place. I'm going to put the other one down on the other end, and that's about... Uh, I don't know, 11 or 12 feet, probably a good solid 12 feet anyway. They need to be at least six feet or more apart. Uh, so I will put the other one in here in just a minute. Um, and I do have these uh, little grounding um, clamps on either end of the frame. Now, one of the things that you have to do, um, because of that, these things have these, um, these little barbed plates underneath there that bite in there that allow the grounding um, the grounding conductor to make contact through the anodized coating of the frame You still have to ground the Aluminum frame of the solar panels as well So in you and just like the the uh, aluminum rack frame you have to get through the anodized coating So what you're actually supposed to do and what I should have done when I went ahead and mounted these guys is that each one of these uh, connection points in between the panels um, this should actually slip down in there and these little these little fingers here snap into the channel. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to have to loosen this up pretty good and then snap that down in the channel uh, so that it digs into both sides of the anodized coating on the frame and the anodized coating on the uh, the frame of the solar panels. And I'll have to do that at each one of these uh, connections. And there's actually six of these in addition to the two that are attached to the grounding conductor um, clamps. So I'll put one there, one down there. And then, so since there are four panels, there are three uh, connection points. So there are basically uh, six of these uh, connection points, two on each each uh, seam, All right? So I gotta go do that. And then I'll put the other grounding rod into place on the opposite end. And then I can uh, finish running the grounding conductor and I can check continuity with my multimeter and we will see what we get.
All right, I've just installed this uh, solar combiner box from EcoWorthy. Now this is kind of a, a small one. This is not something you'd probably use on a real large installation. But again, I got this from Signature Solar. Uh, this was not given to me. I did buy this with my own money. Um, it allows you to basically take in four different series strings and combine them in parallel. So it's got a little, uh, little positive lead bus bar in the back that connects all of these fuses. And then each one of these holds uh, a little uh, fuse, replaceable fuse. Then it's got a uh, dual pole breaker uh, disconnect over here on that side and then these are the outputs. Now there's another port on the back there which I have not connected yet. That is for the ground lead and that should go up here. This this gets plugged into this. This is a, uh, a protective surge device so, um, so it's like a not really a, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a lightning arrester uh, because any direct strike from a lightning strike is going to be a problem no matter pretty much what you do. But uh, it's really designed to handle uh, spikes and surges um, and, uh, and dissipate them. So that's what, what that is for. And again, I haven't connected that up yet. In fact, I haven't cleaned up my wires either. I've simply uh, seated them in and checked my voltage to make sure all the connections are tight. I did go back and tighten each one of these up to make sure, because you never know what these gonna, if these might loosen up in shipping. So I went ahead and re-tightened all of these to make sure they were good to go. And uh, yeah, it's working exactly as planned. It does have a little gasket around the lid here to make it uh, watertight. And these little entry glands here for the, the wires do have uh, little watertight uh, connectors on them. Uh, now, if the, the gauge isn't uh, thick enough, you, you may not get complete water seal on this. So, but you could, you could touch that up with a little bit of silicone if you wanted to. All right, so uh, looking at some specs on this, maybe I'll put a quick static picture up here. It might be easier to look at here, but, but this particular one, as I said, is a four string combiner box. So you can see the maximum input of any one of these four connections is 20 amps and the uh, fusing for these is 25 amps. And that's good because my individual strings here are only 10 amps, so well within the range. And then the maximum total input current that you can have on all four strings is 80 amps, which makes sense because it's just basically 20 times four. And then you can see that the maximum input solar wattage for 12 volt system, 1440 watts, and then double that for uh, 24 volt, double that again for 48 volt. And then probably more importantly, the maximum input voltage of a single solar array is 500 volts. And the max output voltage on this side over here, these guys, is also 500 volts. This is a two pole circuit breaker. As I mentioned, you can see right there, it does say 100 amps. So it's rated for 100 amps. So yeah, pretty affordable combiner box uh, compared to uh, what you can really end up spending if you really get into it. But for a small system, I think this is excellent. And uh, I do like the flexibility that it gives me to uh, split my system into multiple series strings uh, to uh, reduce the overall system voltage really easily. Just really easy to change my configuration if I ever need to. Now, if you're doing this, you probably don't need to change your configuration very often. Uh, but since I test a variety of uh, types of equipment uh, that has different voltage constraints uh, on the input, I have to kind of monkey with this on a regular basis. So this piece of equipment is really gonna make things easier for me. All right, we are in business. This is the EG4 Bright Mount and version 2.0 looks quite a bit better than version 1.0. Now, was it easier? Mm, that's kind of hard to say because uh, I chose to kind of make it semi-permanent and build my own uh, base feet for it. I had to level those out. It did take a little bit more work. And I imagine if you use concrete piers, that's obviously gonna take a little bit more time and money as well. So it's something that you do need to factor in. But the cost of the rack itself is only two, I think 279 or 269. I have to put that in the in the caption below there. Uh, but it I believe it's on sale right now for 279, I want to say, from Signature Solar. And it's it's really a, a very good deal for a solar ground mount. And as you can see, it's designed to handle pretty good size. These are 395 watt panels. It's designed to accommodate uh, four panels. If you had much smaller panels, you could probably get five across and you could probably even double stack them and get up to 10 panels. But you'd have to be have using pretty small panels in order to do that. So with these uh, big 400, almost nearly 400 watt, and these are bifacial Hyundai panels, by the way. And we're gonna talk more about those in a little while, maybe in a, a follow-up video. And we're gonna do some testing to see how much gain you can actually get from these bifacial panels and whether or not there are things you can do in the backdrop or the ground underneath in the back that would improve your output under the same conditions versus just 
just using plain grass like I have right now. We're going to experiment with that and see, but that's that's a topic for another video. So yeah, I'm really happy with this um, with this setup, and uh, pretty happy with that uh, eco-worthy combiner box as well. I forget the price on that, but again, I'll look it up and put it right here below so you can see it. And of course, I'll leave links to both of these in the description below if you do want to go check those out. Um, again, this is not a sponsored video at all. This is uh, stuff that I bought with my own money. So uh, go check it out if you're interested. If this is something that you're thinking about building, definitely can highly recommend it. Um, yeah, it's worked out quite well. So hopefully you found something along the way during this video that you found helpful. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. Consider subscribing. More of these DIY projects are definitely coming. So I uh, do appreciate you sticking around for this one and watching this video with me. And I hope you'll consider joining me for the next one. Until then, have fun out there.